वेलकम फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद अवर द फर्स्ट मेटल फॉर्मिंग प्रोसेस इज द रोलिंग ऑपरेशन और द रोलिंग प्रोसेस सो सी स्टूडेंट्स इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द रोलिंग द रोलिंग इन वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इकोनॉमिकल प्रोसेस फॉर प्रोड्यूसिंग द लार्ज वॉल्यूम प्रोडक्ट्स विद द constant cross section okay so actually this is speciality of rolling and if you talk about the process so rolling is the process in which the metal is getting compressed between the two rotating rollers to have the reduction in its cross section so here there are say for example in simple way we are discussing this these are two rollers these are straight cylindrical rollers we are assuming and we are passing this our ingot or plate or sheet okay and at the exit we are getting see here if this is say initial height or thickness h not so at this exit or at the end of the operation this thickness is going to minimize to the hf okay so and the rollers are rotating with the constant velocity okay so these are the two rollers so the metal is compressed the material going to have the plastic deformation and it is okay in a lengthwise direction okay so this is actually rolling process so rolling process is one of the oldest uh, metal forming process which is having a very high productivity with the low cost that is why it is very important process so we can produce the different uh, cross sections uh, like t l okay i and up to certain extent we can go for some complex shapes so very complex shapes we cannot uh, get deformed in the rolling operation so uh, as i told you these are the simple shapes we can able to produce so if you uh, go to the say the pro manufacturing of the railway uh, wagon wheels this can be produced if you get it into single single part that can be again able to produce by the uh, rolling operation okay so this is simple definition and some introductory part about the rolling rollers in that roller these rollers are rotating and we are supplying or giving the material between these two rollers so that because of the deformation you can get here the reduction in the thickness okay now very importantly make a note that this rolling process is always treated as the hot rolling process please remember unless and otherwise stated we always have to assume the given rolling operation as a hot rolling operation okay if there is intentionally or there is highlight there highlighted for the cold rolling process then and then only we can assume that this is the cold rolling process otherwise please remember the rolling is always treated as hot rolling process okay so before going into the uh, detailed analysis or mechanics of the rolling so let us have some assumptions in this process so what are these assumptions kya kya assumptions hum pehle karne wale hai wahi leke hum aage badhenge so sabse pehla assumption so i will write here the assumptions now why these assumptions are required to analyze the process to see the mechanics of rolling process these are the assumptions are made so sabse pehla assumption kya hai that is very simple because it's a forming process no so volume constancy is valid is valid so volume of the material before and after process is going to be same or the volume flow rate will be going to be same so the initial jitni volume hogi volume, volume hogi utni volume ka yahan pe hogi at the last or at the exit okay so volume constancy is valid the second important thing is that the width of the 
plate is more or larger than the thickness of the plate please remember what we are considering that whatever say width of this plate is much more in size than the thickness of the plate okay so i have to little bit more width i have to show here that is why what we can have assumption here so there will not be any widening of the plate in the width direction please remember very important assumption as we are what we are assuming that the width of the plate is larger than the thickness of the plate that's why during the deformation there will not be any widening of this width okay so that is means what this say b is the width of the work that sheet or plate okay this width is going to be same before and after deformation please remember so this b is going to be constant width of the plate will remains unchanged that is the assumption so what is that actually this is the operation of plane strain type isn't it that is a plane strain plane strain condition is valid okay that is the thing that is width is going to be so in other another another words width of the plate is more than the thickness of the plates why the two or no widening that means no widening of width okay that is width is going to be constant that is the thing this is the second assumption okay now the third assumption what we are saying that the coefficient of friction between the roll surface and the plate surface or the at the interface okay the coefficient of friction at the interface of roller and the plate is going to be low and it is constant mu that is coefficient of friction is low and constant at what or where at interface of the roll and plate that is very important that coefficient of friction we are assuming that it will be a constant throughout the operation at the interface of roller and plate and it is of course it is low and the last assumption we can have here what is the last assumption says that is the yield strength of the material is again going to be constant throughout the process say sigma y is the yield strength of the material that is going to be constant throughout the operation so beginning mein jitni thi wahi kya hogi end mein utni hogi okay and if we are provided with the front and back tension say sigma 1 and sigma 2 okay so this is a back tension and this is a front tension if this sigma 1 or sigma 2 these are given then you can take this sigma y as the average of these two that is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 please remember if the condition is such that agar aisa hoga to then when the front and back tensions are given but sigma y is going to be same constant throughout the operation before the operation or before the deformation after the deformation at the front at this sorry at the front or back at the uh, initial stage or at the final stage it will be same so these are the assumptions which we have to made before seeing the welding process in details okay please look at this now students let us have the first assumption into consideration क्या होगा वेन द वॉल्यूम कॉन्स्टेंसी इज वैलिड सो वेन द वॉल्यूम कॉन्स्टेंसी इज वैलिड सो दीज आर अगेन आई विल ड्रॉ दीज आर द टू रोलर्स ऑफकोर्स सी रोलर्स आर विद द सेम डायमीटर्स एंड दे आर मूविंग विथ ओनली द सेम वेलॉसिटीज विच इज कॉन्स्टेंट थ्रू आउट द ऑपरेशन प्लीज रिमेंबर इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट 
one roller is like this and another roller is like this. What will happen if you are using this such a kind of rollers? Then there will be the bending of the plate. No any deformation. Okay. Please keep it in mind. So again they should have the same velocities also. Okay. So say this is the material that is entering into the roller and this is at the exit okay so now what i am saying that we have to say take into consideration the first assumption so let us have the initial plate thickness or height as say h original and the final that you are going to get say it is h final Roller is moving with the constant velocity, say Vr is a roller velocity, it's a roller surface velocity, okay, how to calculate? Say pi dn by 60 in meter per second or pi dn by 1000 in meter per minute, okay. So, See, capital N is the RPM for the roller. Roller is rotating with the constant RPM N. And to have the linear velocity of that, so we have to multiply with the, this pi dn by 60 is what? Is omega. For that we have to multiply with the radius of the roller, isn't it? So that we can get the linear velocity of the roller, okay? So, see here, so what is the velocity of roller here if it is moving with the RPM n, then it is say pi dn by 60, isn't it? So, pi dn by 60, that should be the velocity of, of the, both the rollers, okay? That is if I write for say this is top roller and this is bottom roller, the velocities are going to be same, the velocity of top roller should be equal to roller velocity of of bottom roller okay so if it's pi d n by 60 for top and having the same rotation then it is pi d n by 60 for bottom okay so both are rotating with same RPM, E and N cancel, this all get cancelled. So diameter of the roller or radius of the roller also should be same. So it is not like that one is small and another is bigger. Otherwise, what will happen? Bending of plate. That is going to happen for sure. Okay. Now what we are assuming here actually, the we are uh, talking for the volume constants, you know. So say the plate is entering with initial velocity V original and at the exit it is now moving with the velocity V final, okay. And please remember R is the roller radius or D is the ro roller diameter. This is the deformation zone actually. This is the deformation zone in which the stresses that is induced in the material are greater than the yield stress but less than the fracture. Isn't it? And of course these are the huge compressive stresses here. And that is this is our deformation zone. Now see here if you apply the volume constancy principle what is the initial vo volume flow rate entering into the uh, roller that is V0 into B see width initial width was say B and as the second assumption that is B is going to be constant. So V into V0 into H0 should be equal to V final into B final into H final. As you know that the width is not going to change, this is plane strain condition that is 
v naught by v final is equal to what? V original divided by V final is equal to what? H final divided by H original or V final divided by sorry V final divided by V original is actually H original divided by H final isn't it? And we know that in rolling operation always we have this original thickness is greater than the final thickness isn't it? So this is bigger than this. So of course this ratio will be more than 1. So definitely what we can have here the final velocity is always greater than the initial velocity. For the strip or for the plate the final velocity of this plate here that is plate is coming with the very high velocity once the it passes the deformation zone it is in it is show the increase in the velocity whereas initially the strip velocity was very less but in entire operation the velocity of the roller was constant now from this point what we can have from this discussion we can prove this mathematically that velocity of the plate at the exit point is more than the velocity of the plate or strip at the entry point we can say like this but what actually happened physically is that's why this material or that plate shown the increase in the velocity what is the reason behind that so the reason is very same that because of this huge amount of compressive stresses the pure flow stress was get induced in the material and because that because of that the material now flowing like a liquid so after passing through this deformation that's why it is the plate is having the maximum velocity at the exit point than the entry point okay so students if we talk about the relationship between the linear velocities if we talk about the relation for the linear velocities that is the velocity of the strip or plate at the entry point the velocity of the plate at the exit point and the roller velocity vr and the roller velocity vr so what can be the relation so initially the plate velocity was very less okay at the entry point roller is rotating with its constant velocity constant rpm okay so definitely initially jo plate ki velocity thi wo roller ki velocity se bhi kya thi kam thi okay now as the material is going into the roller as it is getting deformed between the two rollers its velocity goes on increasing at the end point isn't it where at the exit point this velocity of the strip is now again more than the velocity of roller so if we write the relation for if you write the relation for the velocities or the linear velocities we can simply write that so initial velocity of the plate is lesser than the roller velocity which is again lesser than the final velocity of the strip please remember this is a very important thing we got here isn't it that is the relationship between the linear velocities now at the same time if you are having the relation for the linear velocities then can we have the relationship between the relative velocities okay so of course if I talk about this relative velocity at the beginning of the process so again there was a huge amount of relative velocity because at the beginning strip was having very less velocity but rpm no, sorry but roller was having uh, much more velocity than this <coughs> strip velocity so definitely at the beginning of the process the, there is existence of quite huge relative velocity isn't it now what will happen when this strip is now coming into the roller definitely when it is coming into the roller now the velocity of the plate or strip is going to increase okay 
so now it is gone increasing into the deformation zone isn't it and at particular point same case in linear velocity also but here i am saying that at particular point what happen the velocity of the strip and the velocity of the roller get matched with each other get equal okay so at that point what will happen say this is that point where the roller velocity get matched with the velocity of that strip that at that point what is the relative velocity both velocities are same so definitely what happen there there will be the zero velocity okay at that particular point where vo is equal to vr the relative velocity at that point got zero and that point in the deformation zone in the rolling process is known as the neutral point at the neutral point okay so here also at some moment in linear velocity also the linear velocity of plate get matched with the linear velocity of roller that point was a neutral point here with the relative velocity where the relative velocity is zero that is the neutral point okay now once the neutral point get passed by the strip again what happened as we know that because of the flow stresses it is moving with quite larger velocity than the roller isn't it and it will get the maximum at the end so definitely now the relative velocity was again initially huge amount of relative velocity at the beginning huge amount of relative velocity but at the neutral point it is get zero and ahead of roller ahead of roller or at the exit at the exit it again goes on increasing okay so initially said if we take this velocity of roller with respect to the plate then there is a initially you can have the large positive relative velocity isn't it because roller velocity i am taking roller with respect to plate because roller is moving with the high speed than this uh, strip velocity then definitely so at the beginning we can have the huge amount of positive relative velocity okay so it was positive now it is coming down 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 at neutral point become zero and now ahead of roller at the exit zone what happened plate is moving with high speed so with respect to roller the relative velocity of roller with respect to now the plate at the exit is what this large amount of what negative relative velocity will exist please remember <coughs> or we can uh, have the velocity relative velocity plate with respect to roller then also initially it is negative at the exit you will get it is positive okay anyhow we can uh, have the statements for the relative velocity okay so please remember relative, relative velocity goes on increasing at the beginning at zero neutral point with zero hogi and again aage jaake badegi okay fine now uh, i have drawn the uh, little bit detailed diagram of this rolling operation so see here the same thing that now not i'm going to uh, i will not write actually so what is v v will stand for velocity h will stand for the thickness okay o that is the uh, v o h o these are the initial parameters or the beginning parameters okay and f will be the at the final or at the end or at the exit so vo is the initial velocity of strip ho is the original height of the strip or original thickness of the strip hf is the final thickness of the strip and final velocity of the strip is vf vr is going to be the roll velocity 
and r is what the radius of the roll okay so see here again i want to write here alpha alpha is what alpha is known as the angle of deformation angle of deformation or it is also known as the bite angle or angle of bite angle of bite please note this okay now you can have the the forward slip and the backward slip we can calculate with these formulas okay one thing definitely we discuss about the slip and pressure which are inversely proportional and the plate is going to have the self entry because of the friction present at the the plate surface and the roller surface okay so plate is going to have the self entry okay now you can see here initial thickness ho and the final thickness hf okay so the difference between these two thicknesses is called it as a draft the draft that is given as the delta h okay which is equal to h original minus h final h original minus h final okay now you can see here from the diagram this is the draft we are getting here original height may say final height minus ho gayi so jo delta h mila wo top roller ke liye kaha hai kitna hai yahan pe mila jo jitna mila uska aadha so that is delta h by 2 and this distance is delta h by 2 okay and see here you can have this o a b this is a right angle triangle isn't it and this ac this ac very important this ac is known as the arc of deformation very important many times question ask or length of arc of contact kya bolte isko ac ko which is generally represented by lp which is represented by lp is nothing but our ac length of arc of contact or length of deformation this distance okay ab okay and ac is arc but we are actually knowing the projected area of deformation will be this ab into the whatever the width of this plate okay we'll get the projected area or contact area to find out the pressure actually okay so let us see in this diagram see again oc is again what r oc is nothing but the radius of roller o, oa is again the radius of roller so in right angle triangle oa obc in right angle triangle, triangle obc tell me what is the cos alpha so in triangle oba ya abo me please tell me what is cos alpha is equal to cos this is the bite angle okay cos alpha adjacent side divided by hypotenuse so ob divided by oa isn't it so what we can write for ob ob how we can get ob if you minus bc from the oc oc me se agar bc nikal diya to kya milega ob milega so cos alpha we can write it as oc minus bc divided by oa and you know that oc is what oc is nothing but the roller radius r minus bc is what bc is this half the draft value delta h by 2 divided by oa again what it is r please students see here very carefully so tell me i can write r cos alpha is equal to r minus delta h by 2 or delta h by 2 i can write it as r minus r cos alpha isn't it or i can have this r into bracket 1 minus cos alpha delta h by 2 or i can have this delta h is equal to 
2r into bracket 1 minus cos alpha. Very important you get the formula for the draft in the rolling operation. Kya mila aapko? This delta is, is nothing but what? This is the draft in the ruling operation, which is 2R. 2R is nothing but what? Diameter of the roller, you can also write here. Diameter of roller into bracket 1 minus cos of alpha. Okay, so from this relation, generally delta H is known to us. H original is there, H final given into the numericals. We are interested to find this alpha value that is angle of deformation or the angle of bite we are interested in isn't it so from this formula please see this formula this formula is for the calculation of the angle of bite this alpha value okay now the next thing that we are going to determine the ac because again many times 2 2 mass question many times in the gaze or es paper you can find this question on these formulas okay so delta h is equal to 2r into bracket 1 minus cos alpha from that alpha can be determined now they are asking to determine the length of arc of contact or length of deformation zone is nothing but how much a b okay so if it is over i will rub it so tell me Now we are doing work for this LP. So again from C, right angle triangle OBA. What is, if we apply the Pythagoras theorem, simple Pythagoras, what you can write? This OA square is equal to AB square plus OB square, isn't it? So from that, we want AB is nothing but our length of arc of contact that is represented by lp so ab square will be what do it fast but show jaldi se karo o a square minus o b square isn't it o a square me se o b square gaya mila aapko ab square or ab will be what under root of o a square minus o b square now put the real values for this what is OA is nothing but the radius of roller R square minus OB. Again, OB case nikaloge OC me se BC nikal gaya. OC me se BC nikal gaya bacha OB uska square. But again, in that, again go for simplification R square minus OC is what? Again, radius of roller R minus BC is delta h by 2 isn't it delta h by 2 whole square now solve for bracket a minus b whole square that is r square into bracket a minus b whole square that is a square minus 2ab 2ab means 2 2 gone minus r times delta h plus b square delta h square by 4 bracket complete Go for again simplification. So R square minus sign hai multiply karke bahar nikalo. So minus R square plus R times delta H minus delta H square by 4. Isn't it? I hope it is clear to you. So R square ne R square ko maal dala. And if you look at this, this already this delta H by 2 is very small term. Uska square koro phir se 4 se divide koro or R into delta H se usko kya karna hai minus karna. Because our roller radius is quite much bigger than the plate thickness, isn't it? Or whatever the reduction we are getting as a draft delta H. So it is very small term. You can not have any... Um, kind of impact on the relation so say I am neglecting this term because no need there so what I can write for LP I will write it here on the top so what I can write this LP is equal to under root of R times delta H R times delta H Please remember R times delta H, where R is roller radius and delta H is 
the draft h original minus h final this is your delta h okay now tell me the value for tan of angle alpha tan of angle alpha what is tan alpha that is ab divided by ob what is ab this is lp that is arc of length of arc of contact and ob is what this r minus delta h by 2 i will write directly okay now r is very much bigger than this delta h by 2 so neglect this term so what is tan alpha which is equal to what this lp divided by r what is lp under root of r delta h divided by r isn't it so tan alpha tan alpha is equal to what take this r into this under root so r delta h divided by r square r r get cancels so what is tan alpha tan alpha is equal to under root of delta h by r and as the by classical friction theorem this tan of angle alpha is what is nothing but the coefficient of friction isn't it so we can write for mu is equal to tan alpha is nothing but mu is equal to delta h by r or or see here dear student now what we have seen that about the tan of angle alpha is equal to under root of delta h divided by r resolution of pressure so see so here will be the pressure acting by this roller onto the strip is say px okay and at the same time when the strip is moving into the deformation zone please remember that in the rolling operation the at the lagging zone see there are two zones basically in the rolling operation lagging zone and leading zone so lagging zone kaha pe hai? so we have discussed about the neutral point isn't it where the relative velocity is zero where the linear velocities are same okay now in the zone left to this neutral plane where the strip is lagging behind this neutral point isn't it and if you see this exit point now strip is leading ahead of this neutral point that's why we are getting here two zones one is at the left of this neutral plane that is the lagging because strip is lagging here and at the right of this neutral plane in the strip is leading isn't it so that's why it's a leading zone now you, if you have say this is the contact point where the contact point of roller and the strip we are having the pressure acting as px now at the same time when in the lagging zone the roller is having the velocity rolling uh, roller velocity vr in this direction so initially from the in the leading zone from the starting point up to the neutral point please remember that the component of frictional force or frictional force is always acting in the direction of the velocity of the roller please remember the frictional component of this pressure px that is nothing but mu times px which is acting here tangentially to this is having the same direction as the direction in which the roller is rotating please remember up to neutral point but when 
the neutral the strip passes the neutral point now the friction is acting in opposite direction please remember say if this is the pressure px okay now to that we are having this component of frictional force frictional force what should be it is that is mu times px isn't it but it is not acting in the opposite direction otherwise a friction bolo to opposite mein aap baat karoge definitely pressure a rook frictional force aap bolenge sir aisa lagega but, but please remember that at the or in the lagging zone the component of frictional force is along the direction of the rotation of roller once it passes the neutral point then the frictional force is now started acting in opposite direction please remember like this but here at the lagging zone it will be in the direction of rotation of the roller and in the leading zone it will be opposite to that of direction of the roller okay so here if you have this component i will show this is the frictional component of this px which is nothing but what mu times px which is a frictional component this is mu times px so mu is what the coefficient of friction at the interface of roll and the strip now tell me if this angle we know this angle is how much alpha isn't it so this angle will be what 90 minus alpha so this angle will be what 90 minus alpha opposite angles so from this right angle 90 minus this 90 minus alpha you will get this angle as alpha isn't it and at the same time see here this is tangential to this px so this angle is 90 degree isn't it but in that 90 degree this is angle 90 minus alpha so if you look at this angle this is again alpha please see it carefully and now you can easily resolve this component px that is pressure force and the frictional force very easily how see if this is alpha then horizontal component of this will be this is the horizontal component of px will be px cos alpha and this will be px vertical component will be px sin alpha now this is the mu px and this is the horizontal line this is alpha so with the horizontal line it will be the angle horizontal component will be mu times px cos alpha isn't it and this vertical component will be mu px sin alpha now i hope it is clear now after having this components of forces now we need a very important condition that is the condition for the self entry the self entry that the plate or the strip without any back or without any pulling action it will enter into the roller that is the condition for self entry and this is we know very well this is because of the this is because of the friction force this is because of the friction which is present at the surfaces of plate and the roller so of course here this frictional component in horizontal that is mu px cos alpha agar ye px sin alpha se zyada hoga tabhi achhi ho sakta hai isn't it that is what i am writing for the self entry condition when the self entry can happen when this mu px cos alpha should be greater than or equal to what this px sin alpha it means that this mu px cos alpha should be at least how much kitna hona chahiye at least px sin alpha ke barabar hona chahiye if you do like that then in the, if you have like that actually then and then only jo plate jo hai strip jo hai apne aap roller ke andar ghus jayegi okay 
so here see px px get cancels so mu should be greater than or equal to what this sine alpha divided by this cos alpha we know that mu should be so coefficient of friction in the ruling operation should be greater than or equal to angle tan of angle alpha that is the condition and what we have get so mu should be greater than equal to what is tan alpha we got here that is root of delta h by r isn't it that is if i squaring both side what i can write mu square should be greater than or equal to delta h times r isn't it so r yahan pe le lo that is mu square r should be greater than or equal to h isn't it or <coughs> delta h that is what i can write here so delta h should be less than equal to mu square r isn't it so to eliminate this lesser or less than or equal to sign this will give us the maximum draft value in the rolling operation that is the what it is saying that this maximum draft in the rolling operation should be equal to or equal this maximum draft should be equal to mu square times r that is the mathematical meaning we are getting from this less than or equal to sign that is the maximum possible draft maximum possible draft in the rolling operation what we are getting that is equal to what mu square times r very important very very important please remember many times many times there are there are the questions many times asked in the gate or ies based upon this this maximum possible draft in the rolling operation kitna hota hai maximum possible draft rolling operation mein it is equal to mu square mu is the coefficient of friction square into the roller radius into the roller radius please remember this now uh, from here they are also asking uh, one more question type is there that is they are asking calculate the number of passes calculate the number of passes in the rolling operation that is h initial to give is given to you then h final is given to you okay this is given term and <coughs> the mu that is coefficient of friction is also given to you coefficient of friction now how to calculate the number of passes or number of uh, draws in the operation of rolling kaise nikaloge how many number of passes so the number of passes the number of pass in the rolling operation can be calculated as this delta h that is the draft divided by this maximum possible draft per pass isn't it yes or no so this delta h in millimeter this delta h max is also millimeter this pass will come here so we'll get number of pass here okay so you know, what you can write here so delta h divided by mu square into r is nothing but the number of passes or number of pass in the rolling operation this is how you can able to calculate the number of pass please remember irrespective of the two high three high four high cluster planetary irrespective of the rolling mill okay the answer should be there otherwise what happens sometimes what uh, students are doing so if i say the two high reversible mill then again whatever the answer is coming here suppose four passes they will divide it by two and the answer will they will write it as two that is wrong so whatever the answer is getting here is irrespective of the uh, rolling stand arrangement or rolling mill you, you will get the number of passes here okay
now we are going to see the pressure calculation in the rolling operation pressure so in the rolling process we can have the pressure in the lagging zone we can have the pressure in the leading zone and we know that the maximum pressure that is going to be at the neutral point so in these three regions we can able to find out the uh, pressure with respect to the uh, thickness in the lagging zone thickness in the leading zone and at the neutral point so if you have the pressure px in the lagging zone so it is given as the sigma y upon n into bracket n minus 1 into h original divided by h at x to the power n plus 1 minus this ho by hx to the power n into say sigma 1 so here sigma 1 and sigma 2 i am taking as the front and back tension okay so here this n that constant i am taking as 2 mu lp divided by delta h that we will first calculate we take this value okay and then we will utilize this n value here so h original is what our original thickness of the plate or strip and hx that at in the lagging zone you are getting this pressure at this particular thickness say this is a neutral plane and if you go back to the neutral plane the strip is lagging yes or no behind this neutral point so it is a lagging zone so hx will be from say here to here this is the lagging zone and from here to here it is a leading zone okay so anywhere in this position we will have this value hx okay so hx the thickness of plate in lagging zone like that now if you calculate the pressure in the leading zone that is strip is now leading ahead of this neutral point so this is what our neutral point so anywhere in this leading zone we can calculate the px in the leading zone as equal to this sigma y upon n into bracket n plus 1 into hx divided by h final to the power n minus 1 minus hx by hf to the power n into sigma 2 where sigma 1 and sigma 2 are what these are the front and back tensions and we know why the reason uh, behind this provision of front and back tension to get the uh, Poisson's effect so that we can reduce the role separating force actually we will see what is this force role separating force so if you have this pressure in the lagging zone pressure what does it means we can able to calculate the pressure in the anywhere in this deformation so either in leading zone lagging zone and at the neutral point so if you want to calculate the pressure at the neutral point which is the maximum pressure we know that what we can do so there the thing will happen is that so this hx will be now what this hx will be what the thickness of the plate or strip at the neutral point the thickness of plate or strip at the neutral point isn't it and the pressure will be what maximum so if this pressure at the leading and lagging zone if you equate at this 
neutral points yes, then what will happen you will get the maximum pressure and from that what we can we can going to equate this pressure so both the pressures are same here so <coughs> at that point what we can have if you have the value of neutral uh, point thickness of the plate you can easily get the value for the maximum pressure either put in lagging zone or in the leading zone you put the value of hn okay then you can easily calculate the maximum pressure or suppose if you want to find out anybody ask you to find out the thickness of the strip at the neutral point what we can do so simply what we can do we will equate these two equations so what we'll get so equate this say equation number one and equation number two but the thing is that let us now for the simplicity i am saying we are not applying the front and back tension so these terms will get eliminated so what we'll get also this sigma y by n sigma y by n get cancelled so what we'll get that n minus 1 into h original divided by this hx will not now be hn thickness at the neutral point to the power n plus 1 is equal to this n plus 1 into hn divided by hf to the power n so from this equation by the trial and error method we can able to find out the thickness of the plate at the neutral point here but see this is time consuming actually trial and error definitely we will get the answer but it is quite time consuming okay so here it is minus one no it is minus one so <laughs> For the n, as we know, 2 mu L by uh, mu L P by delta H, this is the value of n. H O is the original thickness, H F is the final thickness, and H N, you can get the value for the thickness of the plate at neutral point. Okay, so this is uh, the for pressure calculation. Now, once you get the pressure, once you get the pressure what what is next that is the force in the loading operation uh, rolling operation okay force or this is also called as roll separating force so in the rolling operation these rollers are compressing this plate isn't it and they are giving the the huge amount of force onto this strip so street strip is also giving as we know the reaction isn't it so because of this reaction in opposite direction these rolls are trying to get separate isn't it and that is the name why this force is also called as the roll separating force okay so this roll separating force roll separating force okay by considering the plane strain condition that is you know that the sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to 2 by root 3 times sigma yield strength okay this is nothing but say sigma y dash is equal to 2 by root 3 times sigma y we know this okay from the, because we are assuming that the rolling is the plane strain uh, where plane strain is valid plane strain condition is valid in the rolling process so there is no widening of the width only along lengthwise direction material is going to deform okay so this roll separating force so it is equal to this sigma y dash into 1 plus mu lp divided by 4h average okay so actually before directly calculating this roll separating force what we can define this force as that is this force average is equal to this pressure just now we seen if if we multiply this pressure value by this contact area 
or you can say this projected area actually this projected area what we can get this pressure into what is projected area see here we already discuss about this so this this value o a b and this is c this a b our what length of arc of contact so this length of arc of contact into this width of the strip and width is going to be same throughout the operation this lp this length of arc of contact into this width b this is our projected area okay so pressure into this projected area what this width of the plate into this length of arc of contact so here pressure in simple fashion we can have this sigma y dash into bracket 1 plus mu lp by 4 h average into b into lp okay now what is the sigma y by plane strain condition it is 2 by root 3 sigma y isn't it so we will again write in simple fashion the row separating force as this rsf as what sigma y dash is 2 by root 3 times sigma y into b into lp into bracket 1 plus mu lp divided by 4 h average so this is our row separating force in Newton very very important dear students you have to keep this formula in your mind okay always 2 by root 3 times sigma y is the yield strength of the material b l p into bracket 1 plus mu l p by 4 h average you know what how to calculate l p under root r times delta h b is given it's a width and h average you can calculate as original thickness plus final thickness divided by 2 okay so this is the rule separating force please remember okay now once you get this rule separating force now it is very easy to calculate the torque and power in the rolling operation let us see now what we are going to see the torque and power so please remember that torque is what actually this roll separating force multiplied by distance so your distance kaha se kaha tak? actually the entire force is applied along this length of arc of contact please remember in the rolling process if this is the rolling operation so this is the center of the roller so this distance please remember we know that this is what the length of arc of contact or length of deformation so, so from the center of the roller okay to this distance okay so whatever the forces are acting are along this length of arc of contact so this distance we are taking as the arm the arm movement the arm movement r movement as a okay and there is a relation for the arm factor which is lambda is equal to a upon lp so we get they get this a as arm arm movement which is nothing but the distance as lambda times lp okay and you know this say roll separating force is say f average force into distance is what this lambda times lp so this is our torque please remember and this lambda value is basically taken on the whether the rolling is cold rolling or hot rolling and we know that 
the unless and otherwise stated rolling is what it is the hot rolling so lambda for cold rolling it is taken as 0.3 and lambda for hot rolling it is taken as 0.4 please remember so you get this torque isn't it now what is power you know that power is equal to what t times omega okay and here there are of course how many rollers so this is the power in watts power per roll per roller okay so a roller ki power okay so kitne roller hai yahan pe do roller so total power kitne aayegi 2 times t into omega okay 2 times t into omega so let us elaborate the formula here so you got the torque now the power is equal to what this 2 times t omega now put the values of all the things 2 times power torque is what into this force average into what this arm factor into lp that is your arm movement into lambda times lp okay so force into distance torque ho gaya into omega is what 2 pi n divided by 60 very good so you get the power here total power because i have multiplied here c with the 2 if not it will be the power per roller so you know what is f average of roll separating force so 2 into 2 by root 3 times sigma y times b times lp into bracket 1 plus mu times lp divided by 4h average please see these are this is a empirical formula we have chosen here okay this sigma y into 1 plus mu lp by 4 average for the pressure huh? please remember otherwise this area will be uh, this b times lp is a projected area and omega is what 2 pi n divided by 60 n is what the revolution per minute for the roller so if you put this all the values here so <coughs> lambda p is left here so here i will write plus lambda times lp into 2 pi n divided by 60 so this is the power in watt you will get the power in watt and please remember that power is what it is newton meter per second that is joule per second that is watt so whenever you take this uh, value for lp here try to get it in meter not in millimeter okay so that you will get the power in watt so this is the power in the rolling operation try to use this formula only because we have assumed the plane strain condition of course there are other formulas where plane strain condition is not assumed directly you can get the pressure as the sigma y into see directly sigma y i am writing 1 plus mu lp by 2h average okay and coefficient of friction not given you can neglect this term directly the sigma y is nothing but the pressure and you can directly have the power this is to, uh, this is i am talking about the pressure so power and force will be directly this sigma y into blp into bracket 1 plus mu lp by 2h average see this is the another method i am talking about from yaha se me another dusri method bata raha hu very simple but see the nearness to the reality is only possible with this this formula okay dono mein zyada difference nahi aayega you can have the nearest answer chal jayega koi baat nahi so here by once you get this force you directly get power is equal to pi f lp n divided by 60000 this is also way to calculate the rolling power okay and this is the power per the directly in kilowatt per roller you want the maximum power then go for multiplying this 2 pi f lp n divided by 60000 kilowatt 
so here f will be calculated as with this formula okay where we have not considered the plane strain condition if plane strain condition 2 by root 3 times sigma y and instead of 2 here 4 will come that is the difference so anyhow we will solve uh, the question on this power so next the question I will solve with this equation that is rho uh, plain strain condition 2 by root 3 times sigma y so solve kurunga power kile you can go and solve for with this formula okay just now whatever i discuss and just check the answers okay now let us solve one question so students before going into that power calculation uh, question so let us see how we can able to reduce the role separating force how to reduce this role separating force or simply the force in the rolling operation what is formula f is equal to 2 by root 3 into sigma y into b times lp into 1 plus this mu times lp divided by 4h average okay so this is the formula so let us see because many times this is uh, ask in the exam that how to minimize the RSF that is row separating force in the rolling operation and this is a liner question for two marks so see here force see it is directly proportional to the sigma y lp and coefficient of friction and of course the application of front and back tension okay so basically see here the force can be reduced by reducing the sigma y isn't it yes how to minimize the yield strength of the material so go and heat the material up its recrystallization temperature definitely the material becomes soft is yield strength going to come down so the first thing is that you have to minimize the yield strength of the material okay to minimize the force again second thing what we can do we can minimize this lp isn't it we can minimize this lp but you know lp is what is equal to under root of r delta h means the force can also be reduced by the reducing roller radius or diameter yes or no reducing the roller diameter okay but when you are go on reducing the roller diameters you have to provide the backup rolls to maintain the rigidity isn't it so no any issue again you can reduce the force by reducing the roller radius or diameter and the third thing very important that by the application of by the application of the front and back tension the front and back tension of course see when the strip is going to pass through the roller it is undergoing the deformation and if you apply the front and back tension like this so what is going to happen there there going to be the effect called it as C poison effect is going to generate that is in lateral direction we are minimizing the thickness isn't it so we are getting here the poisons effect the poisons effect okay so of course this stress is going to minimize this thickness along the lens direction so it is going to help for reducing the force in the rolling operation please remember so in this way we can able to minimize the force of course the mu also if less then also you can reduce the role separating force okay now let us see the question so students see the question what is given here in a single pass rolling operation a 20 millimeter thick plate of width 100 millimeter is reduced to 18 mm thick the roller is roller radius is the roller radius is 250 millimeter and the revolution of roller how much 10 rpm is given the average flow stress of the material is 300 and megapascal the power we have to calculate in kilowatts okay so 
this is actually question from ISC Bangalore uh, the gate paper 2008 mechanical engineering so see here so I will write the data original thickness 20 millimeter final thickness as 18 millimeter roller radius 250 millimeter and sigma y or sigma flow stress is 300 megapascal okay and width of the plate is 100 millimeter so power you know power power is equal to 2 by root 3 times sigma y times blp into bracket 1 plus mu lp by 4h average into lambda times under root of r delta h into 2 pi n by 60 watts and this is power per roller if i multiply by 2 this is this will get the total power of course total power is gas not power per roller so first of all calculate this lp value as under root of r delta h what is <coughs> R 250 into delta H 20 minus 18 2 so under root of 500 okay so here lambda value unless and otherwise stated we will consider that this rolling is hot rolling so lambda will be 0.4 okay so uh, to get this use of this entire formula for roll separating force let us calculate the value of mu okay mu is not given so calculate here so we know that delta h max is equal to what mu square times r so what is mu square delta h max is 2 millimeter divided by roller radius of 250 so 2 divided by 250 root of the answer will get 0 0.09 as the value of coefficient of friction you got here 0.089 actually here okay so let us try to put the values into the equation so this is 2 by root 3 times 300 times 100 isn't it into root of 500 into 1 plus 0 0.089 into root of 500 divided by 4 times what is h average 20 plus 18 38 divided by 2 it is 19 okay into 0 0.4 times under root of 500 is our lp into 2 pi rpm 10 divided by 60 so let us calculate and tell me the answer this is the power per roll i have not multiplied by the 2 to get the total power so <coughs> root of 500 is 22.36 i will write here it is, this is our lp value so <coughs> 22.36 multiply by 300 into 100 into 2 divided by root of 3 okay then you get this much value adds 774.573 into e to the power 3 into bracket so into 1.026 into 8.944 into 1.026 okay so if you do this product of all we will get 1.026 into 774 
0.6. So you got here the power as, of course, the 7.44 kilowatt. Okay, if you get this power, you got it here 7.44 kilowatt. Now, here they are asking the total power required in the rolling operation. To, so, this total power will be 2 multiplied by 7.44. So, how much it is? Into 2. So, it is around 14.88 or nearly equal to 15 kilowatt. Okay. So, see here, nearest answer you are having here, 15.88. 2 kilowatt this is the answer understood now in this video we are going to see the rolling stand arrangements okay the how the rollers are arranged in the rolling mill is called as the rolling stand arrangement so you can see here there is two high mill there is two high reversible mill three high mill four high mill right then there is a cluster meal, you are again having the planetary meal. So these are the arrangements in the rolling meal for the rollers, which is nothing but the rolling stand arrangement or simply you can say these are the rolling meals, various types of rolling meals that we are going to see. So let us look here, I have put the diagrams on the board, okay, so that we can get it quickly. See. This is the two high reversible mill. So basically see the name for this every arrangement is given from the how many number of rollers are there into the arrangement. That is the thing. See here two rollers are there. That's why the name is two high rolling mill. Now why only two high rolling mill? There are two rollers and it is moving only in one direction. And this is most commonly used rolling mill. That is two high rolling mill. Okay, the roller will move only in the one direction so that this strip or this slot or the plate will also move into the one direction. So this is the two high rolling mill. If you look at the two high reversible mill. Okay, so the next category in that if I say this is two high reversible okay so what is mean by this so here we can change the direction of rotation of the rolls okay once you have uh, completed this pass so the in between the handling of this hot uh, slabs we are doing this arrangement that is you can rotate the ruler now in reverse direction also that is the name of the stand rolling stand is what the too high reversible rolling mill okay too high reversible we are having the arrangement to reverse the direction of rotation of the roll that is why this is the too high reversible now let us see the three high rolling mill so of course by the name is how the name is given based on how many number of rollers in the uh, rolling stand so here see three high reversible mill so here basically this three high reversible mill is used for getting the continuous uh, reductions by having the number of passes so once see if this pass is completed okay now the this plate is given for the next pass without unloading from the arrangement you can have the uh, number of second pass so this is the three high rolling mill now let us come to the four high rolling mill of course four rollers are there but you can see here there are basically these two rollers which are reducing the thickness of this given plate isn't it so whatever the deformation or thickness change is obtained by these two small rollers and these two rollers these two big rollers are simply backup rollers to increase the rigidity of these small rollers that's why these 
backup rollers are used only and one important thing is that these axis if you draw the axis from the centers of this all the rollers vertically it should coincide okay this axis should get coincide otherwise definitely the chances of failure will be more there again if you want to have even very good rigidity for this rolling stand so again you can have the number of uh, rollers you can use as a backup rolls so again see here this is the small rollers which are doing this reduction operation in the thickness but you can again increase this rigidity of small rollers by having this instead of one we are having this two for both the rollers two two backup rolls okay so this is about the four high rolling mills and more than four we can call it as a cluster mill okay this is a cluster mill and the last uh, stand uh, rolling stand arrangement you can see here is the planetary rolling mill so when to use this planetary rolling mill when you require the large amount of reduction into the given thickness of the plate then of course you will use this planetary rolling mill so here this is the backup roller onto that a small planetary rollers are mounted okay this is actually the feeding roll you are having the uh, planishing rollers here and this of course this is going to the coil okay because you are getting a very very huge amount of reduction there that's why it is going to the towards the coil so planetary rolling mill so backup roll on that black up roll we are having very small small rollers as a uh, <coughs> planetary gear okay so you can see here the small rollers mounted on this uh, big size backup roll you will to get the huge amount of reduction okay so in this uh, arrangement we can have here the guides also for guiding this thick sheet into the this planetary gears oh, pl sorry planetary rolls okay so this is about the rolling stand arrangement or simply the various types of rolling mills thank you